Hi, everyone. I cannot believe we're finally doing this. And I'm so excited. So excited, in fact, that I have totally forgotten to introduce myself. So before we formally actually begin, let's get our introductions out of the way. I'm Lucy, your host. You're listening to Sickle Talk, and let's talk about Sickle Cell. Alrighty, reboot. Rebooting Sickle Talk has been in the books for months. And to be finally sitting down and recording, I have no words to describe how I feel about being able to be back in this chair and sitting down and recording and doing all of this again. The format of Sickle Talk has been restructured to fit a post-pandemic world. Originally, Sickle Talk were videos that talked about sickle cell anemia upcoming events, spreading awareness, and how certain things were done. For the most part, Tickle Talk has remained like that. However, instead of videos to keep up with social distancing, we have opted for podcasting. And to be totally 100% honest, this works far better for scheduling purposes. This opens the door for so many more guests, and I am so excited to have more people on here and talk to you guys and just talk about Sickle Cell and just literally just being able to talk to you guys. Now, firstly, before we get too far into this episode, I wish to say that this episode is completely dedicated to our founders. In November of 2023, our last surviving founder, Dr. Edgar Jackson, sadly passed away at the age of 88. While I did not have the privilege nor honor of meeting Dr. Jackson, I have heard wonderful sentiments and memories from our executive director, Ms. Ira Bragg Graham. Dr. Jackson was a true hero, dedicating his life to breaking down barriers and opening doors for those who are often overlooked. He penned over a dozen articles on medical and community health topics ranging from hypertension to sickle cell anemia. His mission was to transform how physicians viewed patients with sickle cell disease and he worked tirelessly to achieve that goal. He served as medical director of the American Sickle Cell Anemia Association, chaired the Cleveland Academy of Medicine Sickle Cell Anemia Advisory Committee, and was even a member of the Ohio Department of Health Sickle Cell Anemia Advisory Committee. As if that wasn't enough, he also founded a consulting firm EBJ and Associates LLC to help medical and administrative staff develop essential skills, promote inclusion, and eliminate health disparities. Dr. Jackson's legacy is one of compassion, courage, and unwavering determination to make a world a better place. And as I was looking up topics to better dedicate this episode to our founders, I realized that... Sickle Talk never covered the American Sickle Cell Anemia Association and what we do and how we were founded and all that wonderful information. So that's what today's episode is actually going to be about. The oldest community-based sickle cell agency. The American Sickle Cell Anemia Association was founded by seven individuals. Dr. John Lewis, Dr. Edgar B. Jackson, Dr. Harold Ford, Dr. Clifton Turner, Dr. George Jackson, Dr. Lewis Wright, and Miss Anita Polk, who was obtaining her PhD at the time the ASCAA was founded in July of 1971. ASCAA was founded by all these wonderful founders I just mentioned because of the 1970 mortality and morbidity rate in the African-American Black community here in Ohio. Now, what is mortality and morbidity rates? And why was that important to the founding of the American Sickle Cell Anemia Association? And why is it actually so important today. Let's break that down. Morbidity is when someone has a specific illness or condition. Now, in our case, morbidity would be sickle cell anemia. A person can have more than one morbidity. This would be called a comorbidity. In the case of sickle cell anemia, comorbidities could include crises, strokes, acute chest syndrome, or ACS, and a few other complications. Mortality is the number of deaths because of a specific illness or condition. All of this information is still used today to help organizations such as us track the number of those born with sickle cell anemia in our region and make sure that those within this community have access to doctors, physicians, counselors, social workers, and community health workers for resources and more. Now, back in the 70s, how the screening process was done was a little different than what it's commonly used and seen today. Today. Initially, the screening process was done with something called a sickle dex. Today, it's commonly known as a hemoglobin solubility test. The easiest way to think of this test is to think of it as a rapid test. 
Unfortunately, sickle decks wouldn't let them know what type of sickle cell anemia a person had, so further testing would be needed. Thanks to the Health Resources and Service Administration, or HRSA, the ASCAA was funded so that more comprehensive diagnostic testing could be done. Now, some history. Dr. Robert Guthrie in New York introduced a screening for newborns. Dr. Guthrie and 29 other states united to test newborns for a condition called PKU. Now, this is not too important to why we were founded, but how the newborn screening process was implemented, this is would this would be important. This study, this specific study, was a gateway for the newborn screening program or mandate that we know today and that is what commonly is used today. All 50 states follow the newborn screening and the uniform panel of conditions that babies are tested for when born. This uniform panel, also known as the Recommended Uniform Screening Panel, or RUSP, has conditions such as cystic fibrosis, critical congenital heart conditions, hearing loss, and other forms of immunodeficiencies and disorders. Sickle cell anemia and its variants weren't added to the RUSP until 1990, New York being the first to add it to their mandate in 1975. Specifically remaining in Ohio, because that's where the ASCAA is located, the newborn screening was implemented in 1966. However, sickle cell disease and treat variants weren't added to the screening until July 1998. As mentioned previously, newborn screening is a state service that provides millions of babies with early detections of dozens of disorders. Today, the American Sickle Cell Anemia Association helps thousands of families and individuals navigate a system to receive quality of care they deserve by working with dozens of clinics and hospitals within its regions. Even then, we filter through dozens of inquiries for education and assistance domestically and internationally. The ASCAA, since its inception, continues to offer education, counseling, outreach programs, and supportive services at no cost. Sickle Talk, what you're listening to right now, is just one of the programs that the ASCAA has to offer. We also have a program affiliate with CHAMPS called Sickle Cell and You, where individuals and families can get together to meet with physicians, social workers, and others to speak about sickle cell anemia. We are constantly in our community by attending numerous health and resource fairs, as well as committed to keeping updated information about breakthrough research studies, medication, and more. As we wrap this up today, I know this was pretty short for an episode, but as we wrap up, wrap this up today, I want actually to call what I want to actually put a call out to all of our creative listeners who like to draw or write. Actually, it isn't even limited to drawing and writing. If you are creative and have sickle cell anemia, please reach out to us that so that your art can be featured on an episode of Sickle Talk. You may email us at Sickle Talk, S-I-C-K-L-E-T-A-L-K at ASCAA.org for more information that will be somewhere in the description above or below. Keep your eyes peeled on our social media sites. We are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Threads. Podcasts will be released monthly. And I'm super excited about our guests that will be coming on here, such as the Sickle Cell team at Cleveland Clinic, which includes Dr. Robbie Hanna and his esteemed team of people. Tune into wherever you listen to your podcast regularly. And until next time, I'm Lucy, your host, and you've been listening to Sickle Talk. Sickle Talk is owned and operated by the American Sickle Cell Anemia Association. It is funded by viewers and listeners like you. Thank you.